What is going on guys, welcome back. In today's video I'm going to provide you with a full NumPy crash course for Python. For those of you who don't know what NumPy is, NumPy is a library for Python that allows you to work efficiently with vectors, matrices, arrays. Uh, it's mainly written in C, but it is a Python module, so you can just import it, work with it, and it is the basis for most data science and machine learning libraries like Pandas, Scikit-Learn, Matplotlib, TensorFlow, and so on. And if you're interested in data science and machine learning, NumPy is a minimum requirement. You need to know it, you need to, to be familiar with it, you need to work with it. Um, and another thing I want to show you here is if you go to the Stack Overflow Developer Survey and you go to the section Other Frameworks and Libraries, you can see that NumPy is actually on rank two when you look at all the responses, so 33.84%. And if you only look at professional developers, it is still at rank number three after the .NET framework and the .NET Core framework. So NumPy is definitely not a niche thing. And also Pandas and TensorFlow that you see here are actually based on NumPy. So learning NumPy as a data scientist is a very important thing to do, a minimum requirement. In today's video, I'm going to give you a full crash course on this library. All right, so my goal for this crash course is to keep things as simple and straightforward as possible. And because of that, we're going to get right into it with the installation. The first thing that you want to do is you want to open up the command line of your choice. So CMD on Windows or terminal on Linux and Mac. And then you want to type pip install numpy to install numpy. So run that it's going to install numpy. And once you have that, you're going to be able to import it. And you're going to say import numpy as np. Now this as np is an alias, it's optional, you can also do it without it. So you can just import numpy. And then whenever you want to call something, you can just say numpy dot and whatever you want to use. Uh, but this alias np is basically uh, the conventional best practice way to do it in all of the documentation in all of the code samples, you're always going to find import numpy as np. So I recommend you also use the alias np, it's also shorter, and easier to work with. So the basics of NumPy arrays are actually not that different from the basics of ordinary Python lists. Remember, when we have ordinary Python lists, we create them like that a equals one, two, three, four, five. And then we can do all sorts of things like print a we can also print uh, a specific index. So a index one would be position two, by the way, some basic Python knowledge is a prerequisite for this course, because you should know basic Python, like lists, functions, and so on before you get into NumPy or data science in general. Um, but yeah, you can access individual positions here, you can also slice so you can say from position on up until position four, if we have that many positions, um, you can do print a and then negative index and all that. So those are ordinary Python lists, the same can be done with NumPy arrays, but they work differently behind the scenes, they're written in C, they're actually optimized for linear algebra. Um, and how you create a NumPy array is the following way np dot array, and you pass in the constructor a Python list. So for example, one, two, three, four, five, like that. And then we can print that we can also print uh, the type of a and when we run this, you can see that we have the list down here, it's a numpy dot nd array. So that's the type. And uh, what you see here when you when you print it is that ordinary Python lists are separated by commas, those here like uh, numpy arrays are separated just by spaces. And um, besides that, we can use them like ordinary Python lists. So I can copy this now here. And I can say, okay, give me index one, or give me from one until the end or give me up until negative two. So this also works with NumPy arrays, it's not unique to, um, to Python lists. And what we get here as a result is also a NumPy array. So we don't get Python lists here. Um, so that's quite simple, we can also use the same thing for assignment, I can say a and then position two equals 10. And then I can print a and you're going to see that this changes. So that's very simple, very basic. Uh, what we don't have with Python lists, though, are some of the attributes that we have with NumPy arrays. Uh, first of all, let me show you that we can also create multi dimensional NumPy arrays. So I'm going to call this a mul, or maybe a underscore mul and then np dot array. And we're going to have a simple one, two, three, oh, I need an additional square bracket here. 
four, five, six. It's like a multi-dimensional list. Seven, eight, nine, and then close it again. Um, and we can do the same thing here, right? So we can say a mall, and then we can say just zero to get one uh, list. We can also say zero one to get the second element of the first list, which is two. So we can run that, as you can see, two. Um, and it also works like that. So that's also similar to ordinary Python lists. Um, but we also have attributes that we cannot access that easily with Python lists. For example, I can print a underscore mall dot. And now we have different things. So first of all, we can print the shape, the shape is obviously um, the shape of the dimension. So three times three is in this case, because we have uh, one list here. And this list has three lists. And each of those lists has uh, three elements. So three by three. Um, if I now add, I don't know, I'm going to add a one in each list here. If I now run this, you're going to see that we have three by four. So essentially, you can think about this three by four, uh, like a sentence, you have three times four elements, three lists of four elements. Of course, you can also scale this. So you can say now, um, I don't only have that, but this itself is a collection. And then I have another such list like that, for example, okay, now I messed up the formatting. Uh, but now I can say one, 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 I don't know, then one, 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 then one, 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 there you go. Then maybe do it like that. And now this should be what do we have? We have two, two lists consisting of three lists with four elements. So two times three times four should be the shape. There you go, two, three, four. Um, and you can get the shape like that. And you can also get something else. You can also get the dimensions. So a underscore mall dot endim will give us the number of dimensions. So how deep the whole thing goes, in this case, three, because we have three um, levels of of deepness, you could say, or of depth. Um, so essentially, you have the elements which are in a list, these lists here are in another list. And these two lists are in another list. So we have a deep uh, a depth of three. Um, we can also go with the size. So we can say a underscore mall dot size, this will give us the amount of elements. So basically, this is the same as saying two times three times four, just multiplying the individual. Um, yeah, the shape, the, sh uh, the shape values, and then you get the total number of elements. And last but not least, we can also um, access the data type. So we can say a mall d type. Now you might say d type, uh, since when do we care about data types in Python? With NumPy, it's different because NumPy is written in C. And a reason for why it's so fast and so optimized is because it is uh, statically typed to some degree and because it is um, it is a bit more strict and statically typed, essentially. And you can see that in this case, the data type is int 32. Now, in order to see the static typing of NumPy in action, let's go ahead and create an array with multiple data types. So np.array. And in there, we're going to have one, two, three, let's make it multi dimensional. And here, I'm going to say four, and now I'm going to pass a string, hello, and then six. And remember, this is possible with ordinary Python lists. So ordinary Python lists can have elements of different data types. Um, but in NumPy, this does not work. So if we go ahead now and say print a dot D type, you're going to see that it's no longer in 32. It is uh, this data type here, which is like less than u 11. This basically stands for a string with less than 11 characters or less or equal to 11 characters. Uh, so essentially, the data type of the array now is string, this is the essence of this. Uh, of this information here. So we can see that this is actually the case by accessing an element that is not a string or was not a string in the first place. So if I go a zero, zero, which is a one, we can see that it still prints a one. However, if I go ahead now, and I say, type of this thing, you're going to say that this is a numpy string, even though it was an integer. And if I change this here from hello to five, we're going to see that it stays in integer in 32. So a 32 uh, bit integer. This is not the case if we have a string in here, then all the individual elements have to be adjusted. 
everything becomes a uh, data type like that. So basically a string. And I think we should also be able, I'm not sure about this, but I think we should also be able to call the D type attribute here or to access it. There you go. So you can see it's uh, less than u one basically character of length one. Um, so so you can see that specifying a certain uh, or mixing data types changes the data types into the same data type. So we can typecast these numbers into strings, we cannot typecast hello into uh, into an integer. Now we can try that we can specify here d type equals, and then np dot int 32, we can do it like that. But we're going to get a problem. Uh, because we cannot typecast hello into an integer. So what we can do though is if we don't have hello, but we have five as a string, this would work. And then we would see that the whole thing has the data type in 32. This works if we have a five. Now, if I don't specify that I want to have this data type, it's still going to be a string. Uh, because yeah, this is a string. So if I don't say I want to typecast it, it's going to keep it as a string. Uh, I need to provide here that I want to use a certain data type, I think this should also be possible, for example, with a float. So float 32 should be able to typecast all of this into uh, into floating point numbers. And then we can also go to one one, which is the five. And we can see that the data type is float 32. I can also print it a one one does it work like that as well. There you go. 5.0, even though it started as a string. So this is important to keep in mind whenever you have something in a NumPy array, um, that does not or whenever you mix data types, you're going to have one data type in the end. Now, if you do something more extreme, like let's do something crazy, let's import from some library, or maybe I don't know, uh, classifier, no, that's too much. I think a dictionary is enough. Let's go with a dictionary, uh, D equals and then I don't know, a or one goes to a. And if I now pass this dictionary here, I'm not sure if we have a separate data type for dictionary. Um, now let's change this here. You're going to see that the data type is object. So whenever you have something that is not a primitive data type that we can typecast into everything becomes an object. Because at the end of the day, this means dynamic typing. So if I want to have these numbers in the same data type as the dictionary, I have to do it with Python style of objects, I cannot do it with with uh, C data types, I have to do it with objects. So now we're back to dynamic typing, I can add all sorts of things. And it's going to uh, to remain objects, so I can add strings. And everything is still going to work. And we're also going to be able to print a one zero, for example, which is the four. And it's still going to work. But I think when we go to D type, this is also going to be an object. Ah, actually, it's an integer. So I think that when we're working with the object data type, there you go. Okay, now, now it, it switches back to the default Python data type. So remember, uh, when everything worked out when we only had integers, or we were able to typecast, we had int 32 from NumPy. Now that we have the object type, we have the ordinary Python int. So this is different. This is the, the, the unoptimized Python integer, whereas the NP int 32 is different. So uh, when you mix up data types that get too complex, you're going to have um, less efficiency, you could say. So that's the basic thing. Um, you can also specify the data type, by the way, if you have, for example, only numbers, but you want to have them as strings. So if you have it like that, but you want to type cast into a string, you can go ahead and provide a string here and say less than you two, for example. And I think this should work out. There you go. You can see that we have string and you have less than you two. Now, I'm not sure if we can specify whatever we want here, or if it's going to go to the yeah, actually, we can do whatever we want. Um, so this provides a data type and or basically, you can you can force type casting if possible by providing this data type keyword. And the key essence here is that in NumPy, we have to focus or we should focus on one data type in an array. And when we mix things up too much, it um, goes back to ordinary Python data types and Python objects.
So if you want to have a full list of all the data types that NumPy provides, you can go to the documentation. I have the link here, even though I think you should be able to Google it on your own, but this is the link to the NumPy documentation. You just go to the basic types. Um, and now we're going to move on to another topic, which is oftentimes you want to create arrays with default values. So you don't want to say a equals NP array, and then you want to provide a list, but you want to have some default values in there, or you want to fill with the same value. And for that NumPy provides you with a couple of functions. So for example, let's say you want to start with a uh, with an array full of the number seven, for example, what you do here is you basically say a equals and then you can use the NP dot full function. And what you pass to the NP dot full function is first of all, the shape of the array. And second of all, the value that you want to fill with. So for example, two times three times four is what we had before. And the number I don't know, seven, for example, let's go with nine for neural nine is going to fill this array uh, with that shape. So you can see here that we have now two times three times four, this is the structure that we had before we have two, uh, two lists here, uh, consisting of three lists with four elements each. And of course, you can do whatever you want here. So you can go ahead and say 10, 10, 10, and even 10, you know, four dimensional uh, with 10, and it's going to be huge, as you can see here, but this function allows you to create basically uh, a NumPy array filled with one value. Uh, given a certain shape. This is a very, very nice thing to have. Um, there are also some some functions for default values. So if you don't want to if you don't want to go with a specific value, but a commonly used value, you can also say NP dot zeros. So here you only provide the shape, for example, 10 times five times two. And if you print a, you're going to get an array full of zeros with that shape, the same can be done for once. So NP once. Um, let's go with the same shape. There you go. And uh, one more thing that we have here, this is also quite interesting is the NP empty function. So you can say a equals NP dot empty, and then you provide a shape, for example, five times five times five. And you might say, Okay, what's the difference between empty and zero? The difference is that empty doesn't initialize the value. So empty allocates the space, this is a more technical thing that you usually don't do in Python, you don't allocate manually, you just do stuff and it works. But in C you allocate memory. So what the empty function does is it essentially reserves the space five times five times five. And whatever values are there, because in the in the memory, you have some default values that are there, maybe from, uh, for, for whatever reasons, uh, for whatever reason, there are, uh, there are some values there. Um, and empty essentially just allocates the space without initializing the values, whereas zeros, ones and all the other functions, essentially take the space and fill it up with values. And this just takes the values that are there in the first place. Um, this, of course, is a bit faster, but yeah, you, you have the default value. So whatever is there is kind of random. Um, and then we also have two functions that are quite useful to generate sequences. So what you can do here is you can say, let's say you, you want to look, uh, or you want to generate some x values, because you have certain y values that you want to plot. Uh, and you want to now generate a range, what you can do is you can say, x underscore values is equal to NP and now a range is the function a range. And what you do here is you essentially uh, provide three values. The first one is the beginning, the second one is the end and the third one is the step size. So you can say, Okay, I want to have the values from zero to 1000 um, with a step size of five. And if I now print the x values, you're going to see that this is what we get, we get zero, five, 10, 15, and so on up until 995. Uh, we can change this to 1005. If we also want to have 1000. Um, this is the a range function, we also have a similar function, which is the lin space function. So we can say x values equals NP lin space. And the lin space function essentially provides also a beginning and an end. So let's change this again to 1000 to compare. Uh, pr provides also a beginning and an end, but instead of providing the step size, we specify how many values we want to generate. So if I only want to generate two values, it's going to evenly spread two values. Uh, oh, I should also print that. It's going to, uh, to evenly distribute these two values. So zero and 1000. If I go with four, 
it's going to give me these values here. And if I go with a thousand values, um, okay, a thousand is not what I wanted. Thousand and one. There you go. Then you get the values that you may want to have here. So this here provides a step size beginning and step size. And this provides beginning and and how many values we want to have. What's also interesting to know is that NumPy provides us with two special values called nan and inf. Nan stands for not a number and inf stands for infinity. And they can be quite useful. If you want to use them, you basically say, for example, print np.nan like that and np.inf. And they don't really have so much functionality. But NAN can be used, for example, in data sets, if you if you load a huge data set and some columns, um, or some values for some columns are missing, you fill it up with NAN, and then you can drop the NAN, or you can uh, change the NAN, impute the NAN, and so on in data science. Uh, and infinity can be useful, for example, when you get results like a division by zero, instead of just throwing, uh, throwing an exception, you can just um, return an infinity value. And you can also check for these values by saying print and then for example, np is nan. So is this a not a number value? And then you can provide something for example, np nan, this of course is going to return true now. Um, and we can do the same thing for is inf. And I also want to give you some examples for how to create these values. Um, I'm going to give you two examples here. First of all, let's go ahead and say, np.sqrt, which is basically taking the square root, but with a numpy uh, method for that. And we pass negative one here, for example, I'm not sure if we have to pass negative one or a list of negative one, I think this should be fine. This is going to result in a not a number because it's um, essentially a complex number. And because of that, it returns a nan. And if we try to divide by zero, so essentially, uh, np dot array, we're going to have value 10 here, and we're going to divide this array by zero. These two things are going to return. First of all, we're going to get a runtime warning. This is not an exception. This is just a warning. But we can get true and true here. And if I omit this here, you're going to see that this actually, in fact, returns nan and inf. So those are the two special values that NumPy provides. All right, so next up, let us get into something more interesting, which is performing mathematical operations with NumPy arrays. And for that, we're going to make the comparison with ordinary Python lists. So I'm going to say L1 is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, for example, and L2 is going to be 6, 7, 8, 9, and 0. And then we're going to have A1 being NP dot array of the same thing. Actually, I can pass L1 and L2 here. And now we're going to do some uh, operations here, some mathematical operations to see what the differences are between Python lists and NumPy arrays. And the most bas uh, basic thing that we can do here is we can apply some um, operation with a scalar. So we can go ahead, for example, and say L1 times five. What happens if you take a Python list and multiply it by five, I think you know that you basically repeat the list five times. This is what happens here. If you do the same thing with a NumPy array, so if you change that to a one, you're going to see that actually what happens is you take the five and multiply each element of the array with that number. So it's more like working with vectors and working with matrices than, uh, than it is the case with Python lists. So Python lists are uh, basically taken repeated five times. And here we do an actual calculation with all the values. Same goes for all the other operators. So if I go ahead and say, plus, this is also going to work for the NumPy array. If I go ahead now, and I say plus five for the Python list, we're going to get the problem type error because we cannot concatenate a list with uh, an integer. So this doesn't work. This is the concatenation. You can see that this is the case because I can go and say L1 plus L2 with ordinary Python lists. And then you can see that essentially takes one list and the other list and combines them into a new list. Whereas if you do that with NumPy, so if I say a one plus a two, uh, we get a vector addition, you could say so we get one plus six, two plus seven, three plus eight, four plus nine, five plus zero, and so on. Um, 
Same goes, of course, for all the other operations. So if I go with multiplication here, what happens is I multiply all the elements. If I go with division, we're going to get an infinity value here uh, because we're dividing by zero. If I go with, um, what did we miss? Subtraction, right? It also works. Uh, with Python lists, most of these things don't work. So I don't think that we can multiply two lists here. This is going to give us a type error again. I also don't think that we can divide lists. I'm not sure if we can subtract lists. Maybe we get the difference. No. So it's basically all unsupported for ordinary Python lists. With NumPy arrays, uh, we can perform calculations like that. Um, now... What's also interesting in NumPy is that we can do that with lists of different uh, dimensions. So I'm going to delete these Python lists here. Um, what we can do is let's say we have the NumPy array one, two, three, and then we have the NumPy array one and two like that. So we have here we have basically just an array of, of uh, the shape three or one times three. And here we have basically two times one. So we have a two dimensional array here. And what I can do now is I can say print a one plus a two. And this is going to result in a two by three uh, matrix here because essentially we're doing one plus one, two plus one, three plus one for the first row, and then one plus two, two plus two, three plus two for the second row. So this works as well. Of course, they have to be somewhat compatible. So this works because we can create uh, a reasonable uh, result out of that. But if I go ahead now and I add one more dimension here, now the two shapes are not really compatible. So it's not going to work. Uh, you cannot uh, use this operand with these two shapes here. They're just not compatible. So there is some limitation, but essentially whenever you have two NumPy arrays, which you can think of as matrices or vectors, you can do the respective calculations. You can do multiplications, you can do divisions and so on and so forth. NumPy also offers us some mathematical functions. One of them we used already, which is the square root function. So NP.SQRT. And when you apply these functions onto a race, uh, you apply the function onto each element. So if I say NP array, and then one, two, three, and maybe make it two dimensional, four, five, six. There you go. Uh, we can now go ahead and say print NP dot SQRT a. And as a result of that, we're going to get an array with the same shape with the results of the individual calculations. So square root of one, square root of two, and so on. And the same can be done with the sine function. The same can be done with a cosine function uh, and with a bunch of different functions. Uh, so we have cosine, we have 10, uh, we have arc 10, we have um, exp for the exponential calculations. We have logarithm, we have logarithm base two, logarithm base 10, and so on. Um, for a list of all the functions, again, I would refer to the documentation because there's no value in just listing all of them here. You can just go to this link here and you're going to find all the important math functions. But essentially, this is important to know when you use an NP dot whatever mathematical function you use onto an array, you apply this function onto all the individual elements. And this can also be quite useful at times. Um, so next, I would go ahead and look at uh, array functions. Array functions essentially meaning that how do we append to, a, uh, to an array? How do we insert into an array? How do we delete from an array and so on? Um, and for that, we're going to start with a basic uh, appending. So maybe let me get back this array here. If we have this array, what we can do here is we can, or actually for the sake of simplicity, let's start with a simple one dimensional array here. Um, like that, let's say we have this array and now we want to append some additional uh, values. What we can do here is we can go ahead and say np.append and then we provide a as the base array and then whatever we want to append uh, as a second parameter. So uh, for example, seven, eight, nine can be appended here. And the interesting thing with NumPy and also with pandas and all the other libraries is that they usually return the result, they don't change it. So if I print this here, we're going to get the result. But if I print a afterwards, we're not going to get uh, this stored in the actual array. So what we have to do is we need to actually say a equals that otherwise it's not gonna 
make the actual change. And then we can print a as a result here. As you can see, so we can also insert into an array in order to do that, we just use the np dot insert function. And here we specify again, a, and then the position. So we want to insert four, five, six, um, at the fourth position. So actually at, um, or in this case, at the third position. So index three, which is position four, um, and we want to insert four, five, six. I think this should work. Uh, of course, we need to assign this a equals np insert. There you go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now, if you want to delete elements from the array, you have to use the np.delete function. This function is a little bit confusing uh, because it doesn't work as intuitively as you might think. So what you have to do is you have to type np.delete and then you pass the array and then you pass the index followed by the axis. So if you just pass an index here, for example, one, it's going to delete the element at that index. So it's not going to delete this whole list, it's going to go through the elements. So zero, one, two, three, four, five. Um, and it's going to delete index one. So in this case, two, if I specify three, it's going to delete the four and so on, we can actually print the results here. So the first one should delete two, this one should delete four and this one should delete five. You can see that this is the case. However, the second parameter is very important because the second parameter specifies the axis. If we don't provide an axis, this is what's ha uh, what's happening. If we provide an axis, um, depending on the number we pass, it will either change, uh, it will e either delete the row or the column. So if I say a one zero, it is going to get rid of the second row. So in this case of four, five, six, because we have row zero, row one, index zero means that we're looking at this row wise. And if I say delete the row with the index one, it's going to delete that if I change this to zero, it's going to delete the first row. And of course, if we have more rows, it's going to delete uh, whatever we provide here. However, if I now specify axis one, this is going to delete the column with the index one. So column, uh, like one and four are column zero, two and five are column one, and three and six are column uh, two. And you can see here that two and five is missing because we removed column, uh, the column with the index one. And of course, if we have a, a highly high dimensional array with like 20 axes, uh, we can also do this uh, in more complicated ways. But of course, then it becomes quite difficult for us to understand. Alright, now let's move on to some more structural methods that NumPy provides. So methods that are able to change the shape, the structure of the array. And the probably most important or most interesting one is the reshape function. So we have this array here um, of shape four five. So we have four lists with five elements each, we can see that this is the case by printing a dot shape. Uh, you can see four or five here. And if we now want to reshape this, we can go ahead and say, print and a dot reshape. Notice we're now not saying NP reshape, we're saying a dot reshape. And then we're specifying a shape, for example, one that is compatible with four five is obviously five four. So that would mean that we have five lists uh, with four elements each, and we can print the result of that here. Uh, this would look like that. So the order is actually the same. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and so on. Uh, up until 20. So the order is not messed up, but we have a different shape now. Um, and of course, we can also do different shapes. Like for example, a very simple one would be 20 with a comma to specify that we have essentially just 20. Which is not the same, by the way, as specifying 20, uh, comma one, because 20 comma nothing means that we have just uh, one dimension with 20 elements, whereas if we provide 20 comma one, this would mean that we have 20 lists with one element each. So this is what 21 looks like. Um, we can also do 210 and a couple of other things. So 210 would look like that. We can also go with 225, 252. So making it three dimensional, this is also a possibility 225. 
four, five, two, two, for example. And the difference, remember, is look at it like a sentence. This means that we have um, maybe let's delete these here so that we have an overview and let's comment these two out. So two times two times five means that we have two collections with two lists each with five elements each. Whereas this means that we have two collections with five lists each with two elements each. And the last one means that we have five collections with two lists each with two elements each and so on. So you can you can play around with that if you want to. You can also do something more crazy like last example for this reshaping here. One times one times one times one times two times ten. You can add as many ones as you want. And then you're going to get a lot of lists that are unnecessary. Uh, but you can also, of course, do it like that. Then it looks a bit cooler, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> So this is how you do the reshaping. Now, what you of course need to do is you need to assign it. So if you say uh, reshape, you need to also say a dot uh, a equals a dot reshape. So five, four, for example. Um, and if you don't want to do that, you can also use a different function. So if you don't want to assign it, if you don't want to return it, but to actually apply it immediately, you can use the resize function. So if you just call a equals a reshape, and then you do 10 two, for example, you're going to see that a doesn't change. A stays the same because you need to assign in order to change this. However, if you say a dot resize, and you pass 10 to and you print a, um, you can see by the way, uh, we should pass actually tuples of the shape, just as a general guideline here. Uh, but what we get here is essentially uh, this this actually applies the the transformation onto the array without returning it. So we don't have to return it and store it. This does this immediately. Uh, that is that. So besides that, we can also do stuff like flattening an array. So this array here, we can flatten it by just saying print a dot flatten. And this is going to give us the one dimensional view on that or the one di dimensional version of that. And there's a second function that is quite similar to that, which is called Ravel. So Ravel is essentially like flatten. And you might say, okay, but what's the difference then? The difference is that flatten returns a flattened copy of the array, whereas Ravel only returns a view, a flattened view onto the array. The difference is that if I say uh, var one, so variable one equals a dot flatten. And then I say, variable one at position 10, or at position two equals 100, for example, um, then I can print variable one, and I can also print a. And you will be able to see that this here is the copy. So variable one, and it changed the value, but the original array is not um, changed in any way. Whereas if I change this to Ravel, this is going to change the actual array. Why? Because we're not returning a copy. You can see here that 100 changed. We're not returning a copy that is flattened. So we're not returning a new array, which is flattened. We return the same array with a flattened view on it. So we use it as a flattened version. But when we make changes, we're actually changing the original array. So we're just looking at it from a different perspective. Um, that is that. And last but not least, for the flattening, we can also do um, we can also use the flat attribute. So we can say, for example, variable equals, and then we can just say v for v in uh, a dot flat. And we can print that. There you go, you can see this works as well. So the last structural function that we can look at is the transposing or the swapping of the axis. Transposing basically means swapping or, or turning it around. So making columns rows and rows columns. So if we have this array here, one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on, we can go ahead and say a dot transpose. And this is going to basically swap the axis. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten column wise instead of row wise. 
Uh, this can also be done not with a function, but with a T. So the transposed version can be accessed with a dot T. It's the same thing. Um, and then there's also a similar function called swap axis or swap axes. And this can be done like that swap axis zero and one. And in this case, it's going to have the same effect as the transposing. Uh, the difference is that if you have a high dimensional array, so like 50 dimensions, for example, you maybe want to just swap two axes, and then you use the swap axes function, because you can specify the two axes, in this case, we only have two, um, that you want to swap and the transposing basically swaps everything. So it transposes the whole array, whereas swap axes picks two axes to swap. All right, so next, we're going to talk about joining and splitting arrays. So let's say we have two arrays, we want to merge them into one array, or we have one array, and we want to split it into two arrays. How can we do that in Python or in NumPy? Actually, uh, we're going to change this now to a one being that and we're going to then actually close this here. And we're going to say that a two equals np dot array. Like this. So we now have two separate arrays here. And we want to merge them, for example, into one array, as we had it before. What we can do for that is we can use different functions. One of them is the concatenate function. So we can say a equals np dot concatenate. Um, and basically, we pass here the two arrays. So a one a two, and then we also pass an axis. This is important because depending on which axis you pass, uh, it's going to add them in a different way. So if I say axis equals zero, which stands for rows, um, of course, I need to print this as well. If we do it like that, you're going to see that we basically just add the rows, we concatenate the rows, we have two rows here, two rows here, and we concatenate these rows. If I now change this to one, so if I say the axis is one, we're going to do it column wise. So we're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then we're going to append this as columns. So we're going to take this and append it at the end of this. And we're going to take this and append it to the end of this. So depending on the axis, you're going to get different results. Now there's also another function which is called stack. And stack does a different thing stack adds a new dimension. So here we're, uh, we're concatenating on the same dimension. So with concatenate, we're concatenating on existing dimensions, whereas stack adds a new dimension. So what we do here is we basically just say stack a one a two. And this results in, uh, in a new dimension. So we now have not just two rows into four rows or two rows combined, uh, two and two combined into four rows, but we have two additional lists here. So adding a new dimension to the whole ar ar array here for the combination. And we also have two special versions here, which are NPV stack and NPH stack. So vertical and horizontal V stack essentially in this case, at least does the same as the concatenation on axis zero and H stack does the same as the concatenation on axis one. So nothing, nothing fancy here. This is how you merge to a race, what you can also do is you can split. So let's go back to the uh, beginning. Let me just reverse this here. There you go. So we have one array now. And this array can now be split into multiple arrays into multiple smaller arrays. And for that, we use the split function, the split function can be used the following way a dot split. And what we pass here or actually sorry, I messed this up, we need to say np dot split. And we pass the array and then we decide into how many um, into how many things into how many arrays we want to split this. So for example, we can say, that we want to split into two arrays uh, on axis zero. So we're taking the rows and we're spl uh, splitting into two arrays. This would be what we did before, uh, basically one array uh, from one to 10 and one array from 11 to 20. Um, yeah, that that's essentially what we do here. We can also go ahead and um, split into four. So four rows, essentially, so we have each row into a separate array. We can also go ahead and uh, actually let me just copy this array here because this is uh, a more interesting example because there we have six elements so we can do more splitting here. Uh, if we do it column wise, we can also go ahead now and split into into twos. So two axis one. 
And you can see then that we have an array with 1, 2, 3, 7, 8, 9, uh, 13 to 15, and 18 to 20 here. And the second array is with the rest. So we split the columns in half here. Let me just move this. There you go. We split the columns in half here. We can also specify that we want to have three arrays. Then we're going to uh, split the columns respectively. So we're going to have 1, 2, 7, 8, 13, 14, 18, 19. Uh, in one array, then uh, the middle in one array and the right two columns in one array. And we can also split into six here to have each column in a separate array. Um, and that that's basically it. you specify how many splits you want to have, how many arrays you want to end up with and you specify the axis. Of course, if you have more dimensions, you can also specify axis two, three, four and so on, um, which is hard to imagine. But this is how you split NumPy arrays. Another interesting thing that NumPy arrays provide is aggregate functions. So uh, let's say we have this array here and we want to know certain things like what's the smallest value, what's the largest value, what's the sum of all the elements, we can just go ahead and say a min. And we can do the same thing with max, we can do the same thing with mean, we can do the same thing with STD for standard deviation, uh, we can do the same thing with sum. And by doing that, we can get uh, interesting statistical values, we can also get the median. Uh, but for this, we need to use numpy. So np dot median, and we need to provide a as a parameter here. Um, but yeah, you can see that we can do that easily in numpy. This is also not as um, or actually, it's, it's not that difficult with uh, with Python lists as well, because then we just call the min function, the max function, and so on. Uh, but this is also something that you can do in numpy. Um, and besides that, I would like to move on to NP random. So to the randomness of NumPy, because NumPy allows us to generate random values and random lists. And this can be done by just saying, uh, for example, if you want a single number, you can say number equals NP dot random dot randint, and then you specify a range, for example, up until 100. And then you get your random number. So this is not too special, you can also do that with a basic Python randomness. Uh, but NumPy also allows you to do that with a certain uh, dimension. So if I change this to numbers, so plural, I can also specify here the size of the whole thing. And I can say, okay, I want to have shape two, three, four. And now we have a NumPy array of that shape with random values. Uh, and I can also say one here, then we're going to get, okay, we should probably say two here, then we'll go uh, we're going to get zeros and ones here. I'm not sure if we can specify a range. So zero to a 100. For example, or actually, this is probably not uh, the best test. Let's go 90 up until 100. Does this work as well? Yeah, there you go. So you can also specify minimum maximum um, and the shape to generate random values, you can also do that according to a uh, distribution. So if you don't want to just do randomness entirely, you can also do, for example, uh, the result of a binomial distribution. So you can say numbers equals NP dot random dot binomial. And you say, for example, okay, we do uh, 10 tries, and we have the probability of 0 0.5 and the size of the array should be 510, for example. So like a coin flip, the result of uh, coin flips here. So how many times you get head, for example, out of 10. And this is the result in a NumPy array, you can also do the same thing with a normal distribution. But here, for example, you can say you want to have the size of students. And you, you can say, okay, the the mean is 170 centimeters. And the scale is 15. So the standard deviation is 15 centimeters, and then you get sizes here in that shape. Uh, also, one thing that we can do here. And um, also, what we can do is we can also do a random choice. So let's say we have, for example, uh, np dot random dot choice. What we can do here is we can say, okay, choose from these numbers, a random number like that. Um, and then we can, of course, also do that into uh, in a numpy array. So 510, for example, and then we would get choices, random choices a couple of times. So this is what you can do with numpy randomness. 
And now last but not least, we're going to talk about exporting and importing NumPy arrays. And we can do that in two ways. We can do that with a NumPy format or we can do that with CSV files. So if you want to do that with a NumPy file, you just say np.safe and you pass, um, first of all, the path. So my array.npy and then the array. It's as simple as that. If we do that now, we're going to have this new file here. You can see it's binary, so you cannot really read it. Um, but I can now comment this out and I can also comment this out and I can say a equals np load my array dot npy. Then I can print a and you can see that we now have the memory back in the script and the same can be done with a CSV file. But the CSV file, of course, can be used for other purposes as well. So np.safe.txt is the function and we save this into my array.csv. The array is being saved and the delimiter is going to be just a comma for a comma separated values file. Um, and we're going to not load it for now. I'm just going to save this. And here you can see that we have the CSV file with the values. And if I now go ahead again and uncomment all of this, and I say a equals np dot load txt my array dot csv uh, delimiter is comma print a. Then you can see that we have the same values. In this case, we have um, floating point values, but the values are the same. And of course, this can also be used for data sets. So you don't have to store and uh, you, you don't have to export your arrays and then load your arrays again. You can also load from a CSV file, which is a data set and then work with NumPy. So you don't have to use your own CSV files for that. But this is how you can do that in NumPy. All right, so that's it for this NumPy crash course. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. Let me know if you're interested in seeing more crash courses like this on Pandas, Matplotlib and so on. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and 